Hey teachers! Welcome to our very last video. This is number 15 and this one is probably my favorite one of all. And this one is how to teach writing cross curricular. If you've never taught writing this way, it is so fabulous. And the kids make such great connections when they are able to write in math and they're able to write in social studies and science and whole child. It is just fa fabulous. And so I believe that teaching cross curricular can help them make such great connections and they will remember that remember all of these connections for life so I'm gonna teach you some tips and tricks on how to teach writing cross-curricular we're gonna start with social studies okay so in social studies we do a lot of writing um, about informational texts and so this is an example of um, our Texas history unit that we talked about the Alamo and so what I do is I like to make a word bank and I put words, uh, vocabulary words that are from the teaks or from different stories onto a word bank on my pocket chart. So my pocket chart is right next to my teacher, my teacher chair where I read my mentor text. And so after we read a story about the Alamo, we'll talk about some new vocabulary words. We'll talk about Sam Houston. We'll talk about San Antonio, Texas, Santa Ana, Susanna Dickinson, Jim Bowie, Davy Crockett, all the defenders. And so we'll go through all of these words so they understand who they are and what they mean. And then um, all week long, I will do an interactive writing on a big chart and I will write different sentences about the Alamo. We will use all of these words in my story and I will show them how to put the story in my own words. And we, I always tell them to have five words or more in their sentence. And so all week long, I'm modeling to them how to write their story. And then at the end of the week, they are writing their very own story about the Alamo. And so they're able to use the word bank to help them generate their sentences. And so I tell them to use as many words as they can in their story. And if they write a whole page, they get a $50 bill. And you better believe that probably 98% of the class will write a whole page. Even my low babies will write a whole page. They may not be able to read it back to me, but they still love to write because they want that $50 bill. And so if you notice right here at the bottom, this little girl has circled the vocabulary words that she used in her story. So she used Alamo, Susanna Dickinson, um, Mexico, Mexicans, Texas, and 13 Days of Glory. And so every time they write a new story with a word bank, I, I encourage them to use more words the next time and see if they can write even more than they did before. So it's really, really fun. This is another social studies writing that we did um, back in the fall about career day. And so I had a word bank on my pocket chart and the words were honesty, career, community, respect, job, vote, fairness, community helpers, good citizen, responsibility. So I went through the IFD of the TEKS resource system. And so I pulled out some vocabulary words from the IFD and then I put them on my chart. So then they, they could use these words in their story to write about what they wanted to be when they grow up, about career. Um, and so they, they wrote a whole page again for a $50 bill. And this was actually in the fall. And so look at the writing how it started from back in the fall already. I mean, they're writing a whole page because they want that $50 bill. And so again, I urge them to try to use as many vocabulary words in their story as they can. And all week long, I modeled to them how to generate their sentences with the, these words from their word bank. So it's really fun to watch them grow as writers, not only in writer's workshop, but in social studies writing and science writing as well. This one was science with research. I think using science and research is perfect to teach cross-curricular. So we talked about, when we talked about Texas, we researched a Texas animal. Um, so we talked about uh, monarch butterflies, the Texas longhorn, the, the Texas toad, the mockingbird, um, the Guadalupe bass. And so they could pick one animal to research for their Texas animal. And so they, they made a lap book. And so I love making these lap books. And so these are just colored manila folders from Walmart. They're yellow, green, red, blue. And so they pick a color and they decorate the cover with their animal. And then in the inside cover, I staple all their templates inside. And so every day we do a new template. So the first template we do is we write facts. We post facts about our animals. So they, they write adjectives. So they write color, shape, feeling, and size. And so right here, 
this little boy did post-it notes about his butterfly. The second day, we might do parts of the butterfly, so they have to label the different parts. The, the fourth day, we might do the life cycle. The fifth day, we might do the animal research report, and we talk about the habitat, its diet, how long does it live, who is it, who are its predators, what kind of animal is it. And then the last day, they write their story using all the different vocabulary words they've used, they've learned, um, and they write a story about their animal, animal. And again, they get a $50 bill if they write a whole page. And so all of these templates get stapled into their lap book. It is fabulous. And so I hang these out into the hallway and it, they're so adorable. And the parents really love these because it shows a lot of um, creativity on the student's part. And so, and they love making these lap books. They are so fun. Um, another thing that we do in science is we write, we talk about rainforest habitats, we talk about ladybug um, life cycles, and so we write the order of the life cycle, for example, first, then, next, and last, and so we talked about the, the eggs, the larva, the pupa, and the ladybug, and then they have to write first, then, next, and last, and they write a whole sentence for each part. Again, I have vocabulary words on the pocket chart. I have pupa. I have larva. I have um, ladybug, I have eggs, I have aphids, um, life cycle. And so they have to use as many words as they can in their story. And then they make a craftivity with a ladybug. And then um, if they open up the wings, the life cycle is on the inside um, of the wings. It's really cute. This one, we talked about the different layers of the rainforest when we talked about habitats. And then we wrote a rainforest poem. Um, about the rainforest. Come and see the rainforest. It looks like a wet forest. It smells like rain. It feels rainy. It sounds like noisy animals. It has four layers. It is wet and humid. And so they are writing their poem, their sensory poem, about the rainforest because, again, we've read lots of books about the rainforest. We talked about the different adjectives that describe the rainforest. And so we talked about the different layers, about the different animals that live in the different layers. And so then they're writing a poem about how they feel about the rainforest using their adjectives. So it's really fun to connect writing with science. And then for math, I love having my kids write story problems. I think that is so fun and the kids love it. They really do. However, it's hard to get them started at the beginning. So I give them sentence starters. So my sentence starters are these. One day I saw, there was, one day I ate, there were, okay? And so I give them a booklet in October and it's called Haunting Halloween Story Problems. And so I say, the answer is five, what is the problem? We practice together how to write story problems together. And as my teacher table, I give them stickers. And so we, we uh, use sticker stories to help generate our problems, our story problems. And then I, I work with them and we write it together. I model how to do it together as a class um, whole group. And then in small group, they're able to write it by themselves with my help, of course. So we started in October. And then this is the one for December. It's called Christmas Story Problem Pack, uh, the booklet here. So again, they use stickers to decorate their story problem. This one says the answer is seven. Um, what is the problem? And this, so they decorate their wreath with stickers. And then this one has a Christmas tree. The answer is nine. What is the problem? So as long as their answer is nine, they can do addition or subtraction. And I also teach them how to write how many, um, how many are left for a subtraction question and or how many, how many are all together as an addition question. Um, this was at the very end of the year in May, and I had these sentence starters on the smart board. I had a number sentence on the smart board. They had to use that number sentence in their story problem. They had to use either one day, or I had, or I saw, or there was. And so they're generating their own story problem on their whiteboard. So like you see this little girl here, she says, I had some, I had some, t I had 10 horses and I had 10 more horses. How many horses do I have? I'm sorry, I had 10 horses and I rode two. How many do I have left? So they're generating their own story problem. And they did a great job because we have been practicing these all year long with the sentence starters. And I really did not have to even prompt them. They just took off. They just did it by themselves. Um, and so then after they write their story problem, they turn and tell each other their story problem. And then um, they share with each other and then they see if... Um, their partner has the same thing or something different. 
and they compare. And so um, these are really great. If this is a really great way to do writing cross curricular for math. And I also have a YouTube video in the Google Classroom. You can you look at my um, watch my YouTube video of my class writing their story problems. It's really cool. Okay, so for reading and writing, we talk about persuasive texts. And so I have these cards, again, on my pocket chart, and opinion story starters. So we use these story starters to write our persuasive argumentative text. I believe, I feel, the best thing about, I prefer, everyone should, I think, and in my opinion. And so I tell them persuasive text tells the reader to convince the reader to try something, to buy something, or to go somewhere. And so I tie it in with Earth Day. And so we read a lot of Earth Day books. And so then the, the kids are writing a persuasive story about how to save the Earth or why should we save the Earth. And so um, they can start with whatever sentence starter they want to start with. I feel, I believe, I think. And again, if they write a whole page, then they get a $50 bill. And so I give them, they do a pre-writing, they do a brainstorming page, and then they copy their their story onto the final draft and then I staple it onto a blue background and then they made a heart, the earth heart at the top with the little red heart in the middle. So this was for Earth Day and it was really fun. This is um, reading and writing for procedural writing. So we talk about how to, we do a lot of how-to stories, how to make s'mores, how to make a pizza, how to um, make a birthday cake, um, how to make um, a rainforest diorama, how to how to make uh, pancakes, how to make tacos. I mean, there's lots of different things, how-to stories that we do. So procedural text goes in sequence. It goes first, then next, and last. And I have these cards on my pocket chart. And I read them a story about a birthday cake. And then we talk about what happens first. And I have cards that have the ingredients for the cake. And then they put the, the ingredients in order. They turn and tell each other the sequence and how they're going to make the cake. I also read Thunder Cake by Patricia Polacco, which is really fun. And then we can also write about how to make a Thunder Cake because in the book it goes in order about how they made the Thunder Cake, which is really cool. Um, and so this is the craftivity that we have made with the cake at the top and then the, the different sequence of events for the cake and how to make it. But I really feel like having the cards... Um, vis visual, the visually up there on the on the pocket chart or on the smart board so they can see the cards, they can see the words that they need to use for their story is very helpful. This was something fun we did in November. We read Turkey Trouble. Um, and so they we talked about inferencing and they're going to give clues about their turkey that was in disguise. And so in Turkey Trouble, if you're not aware with that story, um, the, the turkey tries to disguise himself so he doesn't get cooked for Thanksgiving. Um, and so they disguised their own turkey. I gave them a turkey and they created whatever they wanted to make about his, about the turkey. So this little girl made a Dalmatian <laughs> dog. This one made a pizza man. And so they have to write three clues and then at the bottom they write drawing conclusions. So she says, I have black spots. I am yellow. I am fast. I am a, a cheetah. Oh, sorry, it's cheetah, not a, not a Dalmatian, <laughs> cheetah. This one says, I have a red hat, I have pepperoni pizza, I deliver pizza to people, and drawing conclusions, I'm a pizza man. So this was really fun for inferencing. So reading and writing, again, go together. And then whole child, if you want to do a whole child journal when you do morning meetings, um, I love to do a whole child journal. And so we do a lot of interactive notebooks um, interactive pages for whole child. So this one, self-awareness, they write a title of the story that we read. Here's a picture of what this skill means to me. And it says, what did I learn today from this story? They write a, write a sentence or sentences about it. This one's about decision-making, the title of the story that we read. Here's a picture of what the skill means to me. What did I learn from the story? And then I also have a goal book that we make for goal setting. They draw a picture of themselves here in the, on the cover. And then my goal for being a good friend, they write a goal and then what I'm going to start doing, what I'm going to keep doing, and what I'm going to stop doing as a, as, a, as a good friend. And then the goal settings I have for math and writing and reading and um, let's see, what else? Spelling and all that good stuff. And then um, I have these other templates that we use. How can I fill someone's bucket? So they write about inside the bucket, they write sentences about, or they can write words about how they can fill someone's bucket. 
How are we all equal? They can write words on the children around the world. How are they equal to each other? How can I be a star? They can write about how they can be a star. And then how can I self-manage? Here they can write words on the arrows and then glue it in their whole child notebook. So just another way to, to do writing cross-curricular during morning meeting time. And then if you want to do an extra writing time during your, your small group table, like when you're doing your reading group. And then so after you read a story in your reading group, let's say that you have a high group and the high group reads a story about foxes. And you want them to retell the story. Well, not just retell, but you want them to write about it. So I have these guided writing booklets. And they're about this big. They're half a page. Um, and so I, I um, cut them in half. I staple them together. And they have different templates. Like we'll have author's purpose. Or we'll have text connections. Or we'll have beginning, middle, and end. We'll have story elements. And so they write sentences for each part. They draw a picture for each part. This one is text connections. So they have to tell about a text to self connection, text to text connection, text to world connection. And then they draw a picture, they write a sentence about it. And then here's some more templates. We have author's purpose. So they're writing persuade, inform, or entertain. Um, text connections, we just saw that one. Sequence of events, first, then next, and last. They draw pictures and then they write sentences at the bottom. Story elements, character setting, problem, and solution. Okay, so this um, resource is in the um, Google Classroom, and it's got all of these templates in here, and then you're welcome to check it out, and you're welcome to use it. It's in Google Classroom, and this is what I use for my Hi Babies um, at the in the fall whenever we are writing about the story that we just read, because they can read um, higher level stories. <clears throat> You could even use these, the, use this with your low babies as well because there's pages that are just blank and then they can write a sight word on it and they can write a sentence with their sight word. Okay, so I hope you got some great ideas about how to teach writing cross-curricular. I really um, am excited that you guys took this training. So you're at the very, very end. There's one, well, there's one more thing that you have to do before you... Um, get done with the training you have to do your assignment and your assignment is to um, write the first 10 days of the how to launch writers workshop from day 1 to 10 so in the Google classroom there's a there's a, a lesson plan template that you can use to submit your assignment and so after you submit your assignment to Google classroom then you'll get credit you'll get three hours credit for this course um, and so I cannot wait to see what you guys come up with. You can, you can use um, all my lesson plans that I've given you, all of the different videos that I've given you, um, ideas or suggestions. You can use any of my suggestions if you want to, or you can use your own ideas. That's fine too. Um, whatever you'd like to do, but I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. So you guys have a great rest of the summer. And I cannot wait for you to start Writer's Workshop. And I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.